test of our own kind, my brother, my sister, black people, this life is about to tickle you. Today we're talking about a man who was born on the 17th day of April in 1823. How many years exactly today? 200 years, my brother, my sister, he was born. Oh gosh. The 17th day of April in 1823. He was born, my brother, my sister, in America. In fact, in the state of Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, my brother, my sister. Yes, born in the state of Pennsylvania, capital Philadelphia, my brother, my sister. Today we are talking about the man who was born and christened Miffin Wister Gibbs, whose photograph you see in the African history class. Mifflin Wista Gibbs and Mifflin is spelled M I W F L I N. Wista is W I S T A R. Gibbs is G I W B S. This is it. Watch me. Hey. Yabo. Our hero for today, Mifflin Wista Gibbs, was born on the 17th day of April in 1823. He was born in Philadelphia in the state of Pennsylvania. He was the second of four siblings. The eldest being his big brother, Jonathan Clarkson Gibbs. Himself another big historical figure. You will find time and talk about him. His father was a Methodist minister. So they grew up in a Christian home, reading the Bible and getting to know the virtues of the Bible. And living by the standards of the Bible. My brother, my sister, as a young adult... Our hero for today, Mifflin Gibbs, became very active in the abolitionist movement and worked for Frederick Douglass, himself another bulldozer in the history of black people. My brother, my sister, how many of us know Frederick Douglass? He was the one with the bushy afro, gray afro hair, my brother, my sister. Frederick Douglass was an American social reformer, abolitionist, orator, writer, and statesman. Now, after escaping from slavery in Maryland, he became a national leader of the abolitionist movement in Massachusetts and New York, during which he gained fame for his oratory, my brother, my sister. He worked for this man. Mifflin Gibbs worked for Frederick Douglass, and they were in the abolitionist business. Now, what does it mean when we say abolitionism? It's very simple. Fighting against slavery and all other laws against black people. My brother, my sister, our hero was born in Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. At that time, there were very terrible laws against black people. Number one, black people were not allowed to own any property. Black people were seen as slaves who did not have the right to vote. At the same time, black people in America at that time did not even have the right to walk up as free people on the streets of America without wearing a certain badge. To show that they were slaves and that they were low class human beings. I'm going to take that again. Number one, black people did not own properties. They were never allowed to own property. If any black man worked so hard and made money and was able to buy any property, all the money he had and all the property that he got belonged to his master. If he invented anything, then it was the invention of his master. At that time, Black people were not allowed to walk the streets of America without carrying a badge, just like the mark of Cain, to show the whole world that they were slaves and that anybody could hurt them, anybody could use and abuse and refuse them on the streets of America. And number three, black people did not have the right to vote. Black people could not even congregate where white people were. Number four, black people were not allowed to witness in court against white people, but they could witness against each other as black people. What a dirty country. This was what black people went through. My brother, my sister, and because black people were denied all these rights, our hero for today decided that enough was enough. In 1851, my brother, my sister, when our hero was about 32 years old, he decided that it was time to leave America. So he decided to leave America and carried all the other people who were in America. My brother, my sister, and this specifically happened in 1858. They left America 
and went all the way to uh, Vancouver Island in Canada. Now there was a very powerful leader at the time and he was the one who decided to receive all the black people who were running away from the autocratic powers of America, the dragonism in America. Oh, my brother, my sister, the racism in America. In fact, our hero for today was the one who led that movement. Black people were maltreated in America, racially maltreated, refused and abused. And he therefore decided to pack up Americans, black people, and leave America and go all the way to Canada in uh, a place called Vancouver Island. Now the leader at that time was called Sir James Douglas. Sir James Douglas himself became the very first Canadian political leader or the very first governor of the colony of British Columbia where we would find Vancouver Island. Oh gosh! <laughs> This is the African history class. Our hero for today, Mifflin with Star Gibbs, decided to carry black people and leave America and go all the way to Canada. All because of the racism, the draconism. Oh my God, the draconism. Yes, I'm talking about the draconian rules and laws in America. My God have mercy. It was so terrible. Hear what happened now. Now when they arrived in Canada, at Vancouver Island, they decided to build a black empire right there, supported by the governor, James Douglas. Oh gosh! And over there, they stayed until they realized that the state of California and some other states had decided to restore some rights to black people. That was the time our hero, Wifflin, Mifflin, Wister Gibbs, and all the black people who had gone to Vancouver Island in Canada decided to leave Canada again and return to America. And when they returned, very big things started to happen. Hey, he left America out of anger. He was so, so, so excruciated and pained by the fact that America was delving black people this racial blow. My God have mercy. And decided that yes, as human beings, they will not sit down and swallow draconism. My God have mercy. They moved. And then when they returned, my brother, my sister, after the American Civil War, Lord God have mercy, they took over the whole of America. See what happened now. Our hero was a dealer in cloths. In fact, he learned a lot of business acumen from the wonderful leader of Vancouver Island, and I'm talking about Sir James Douglas, who himself was a fur trader, F-U-R, animal hair, right? Fur trader. He became the topmost black man selling cloths all over America and beyond. Hey, he made a lot of money, and when he returned to America, he decided to study law, and he became the very first attorney at law, black, in America. He became the very first judge in America, my brother, my sister. This is what I'm talking to you about. And it happened in 1873. My brother, my sister, just a few years after he had returned to America from Vancouver Island. Hear me now. In the administration of President William McKinley. You know, McKinley was the 25th president of the United States of America. And he served his term from 1897 until his assassination in 1901. How many people think that only one American president was ever assassinated? John F. Kennedy. No. There was another American president who was assassinated. And he was called President William McKinley. He was assassinated, my brother, my sister. Lord God have mercy, in 1901. Eight years before Kwame Nkrumah was born. That was what happened. He was a member of the Republican Party. He led a very, very realignment, my brother, my sister. That made Republicans largely dominant in the industrial states and nationwide for decades. They shot and killed him. He was assassinated, my brother, my sister. He was the one who decided that our hero for today, oh my God, Mifflin Wifter Gibbs, will be made an ambassador of America. He was made an ambassador when he was sent all the way to Africa, the land of Madagascar, where he became the ambassador. And he became 
Oh, oh, a diplomat, my brother, my sister, the very first black judge. We are talking about the man who was angered by the draconian laws of America. Oh, my God have mercy. Oh, my God have mercy. And decided to move other black people to Canada. When he returned, he encouraged all black people to get some education and take over America. He himself became the very first judge. He was self-sufficient. He made a lot of money. He published the very first black newspaper in California and some other such places and gave black people a voice. Mifflin, Webster Gibbs, my God of mercy. The 25th president of America, William McKinley, sent him all the way to Madagascar where he became the ambassador. Hear me now, my brother, my sister. He was a man who stood very strong and he was a man who lived his life for black people. Hey, Gibbs was married and had two daughters with his wife. Ah, ah, ah. He had two beautiful children and they were both females. Now the family relocated to Oberlin in Ohio in 1869, where both daughters later attended college. Mary Ann had attended Oberlin College. That's the firstborn from 1852 to 1854. My brother, my sister, and he took care of his daughters very well and made sure that they had the highest of education. My brother, my sister. Mm, 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 mm. In 1902, seven years before Kwame Nkrumah was born, Gibbs purchased a property at 902 T Street. Yes, in Washington, D.C., at which his daughter, Harriet Gibbs Marshall, ran the Washington Conservatory of Music. Yes, they were into music as well. And they took over the whole of the state. My God, unfortunately, our hero, uh, Mifflin Webster Gibbs, died at the age of 92 in Little Rock, Arkansas. On the 11th of July in 1915, he was 92, and he was buried at Oakland Fraternity Cemetery. Today we remember you, Papa. Oh, Papa. During the railway period, he supported and worked very hard to support black people. He helped a lot of black people escape from the slavery and racism and draconism in America. Yay, Papa. Papa. <laughs> Yeah, Papa. Papa, busy me new me go. Papa, busy for me copy what Yeah, Papa. Papa, busy Papa. Yeah, Papa. Yeah, Papa. Papa, busy me new me go. Yeah, Papa. Papa, why are you watching? Papa, why are you watching? Papa, why are you watching? Oh, Papa! Papa, why are you watching? Papa, why are you watching? Yeah, Papa! Papa! Oh, Papa! In the burden of knowledge, I ask you. Now that you know the story of Mifflin, Wister Gibbs, what would you do? He got angry and left America. He left with other black people to fight against draconism and racism. He returned to America as a hero. He became the first black judge in America. He became an ambassador to Madagascar because they knew that he was a strong Pan-Africanist. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Papa. Papa, me say me no me go. Papa, me no me go. Papa, me say me no me go what day. Papa, me say me no me go. Papa, for me go. Yeah, Papa, for me go what day. Yeah, Papa. Now that you know what you do, 
Pia neni yo leya mini yo bafe ye zunda kagane meza kayini. Ye ya papango boka ye nungfifi ya ye nya. Nuka ina waba na ye mwebe den. Misi ba na ye mwebe ya bade. Lele ya njima singa be kodme. Lele ya njima singa be ri. Oh papa. It's been the African history class. Father, rest in peace. Tu tu wabi. Tu tu wabi. Apa mula homeo.